Hello everyone, my name is Andrea Colombo and I'm the Engagement, Information and Project Manager of the Comnox Secretariat. It is my glad pleasure to welcome you all to the 20th Comnox Symposium on Antarctic Innovations and Collaborations. Successful collaborations are inclusive and embrace the diversity found within our membership. The way national Antarctic programs continue to conduct and support Antarctic research despite a global pandemic is a showcase of this. I'm honored to introduce our esteemed keynote speaker, Dr. Tim Edlund, Medical Officer of the Alfred Wegener Institute. In the face of the global COVID-19 pandemic, national Antarctic programs encountered unprecedented obstacle, and yet, through unwavering dedication and cooperation, we overcome them, ensuring the safety of expeditioners and preserving the pristine environment of Antarctica. Leading the COMNAP COVID-19 ad hoc subcommittee, with the support of the COMNAP XCOM and of Dr. N. X, former Chief Officer of the COMNAP and SCAR Joint Expert Group in Human Biology Medicine, team had been at the forefront of the development of non-mandatory recommendation in the context of Antarctic operation, protecting our members while maintaining our operation, our assigned support activities, long-term monitoring projects and safeguarding the Antarctic ecosystems. During his address, he will shed light on the collaborative efforts that brought together over the time of two Antarctic seasons, medical professionals, logistic experts and support staff, all working in unison to overcome the challenges imposed by the pandemic and allowing a transition from an elimination to a mitigation strategy. Furthermore, our keynote speaker will take us on a journey through the experiences and lessons learned throughout this period, emphasizing the importance of communication, preparedness, transparency, and the implementation of comprehensive safety protocol. Without further ado, I leave the virtual floor to Dr. Tim Eidland. Dear Conab XCOM, dear colleagues, dear all, Unfortunately, I couldn't come to Hobart in person, so best greetings from Bremerhaven to all of you. I can only imagine that some of you, maybe the better part, grew somewhat tired of listening to me talking about Corona and might not be too eager to relive that experience once again. The bad news is I'm going to give this presentation anyway, but the good news is that I promise make it short and that I will keep all available fingers crossed that there will be no need for you to listen to me talking about Corona in the foreseeable future. Anyway, it is a great honor for me to be invited and it is my pleasure to give you a presentation about Comnap's proactive development and response to the then evolving pandemic formation of the subcommittee on how we assisted the national Antarctic programs peripandemic operations for over two seasons and transition from elimination to mitigation protocols and also the lessons learned. I do know that Anne Hicks, who did a great job as the chair of the joint expert group on human biology and medicine, will also give a presentation. So I won't go into great detail on their undisputed merits. Allow me to start at the very beginning. The International Mosaic Expedition organized by Alfred Wegener Institute had begun in September 2019. And researchers from 18 countries were taking part. The goal was to monitor changes in the Arctic over the course of an entire year. In December, when the outbreak of an unknown disease was reported to the World Health Organization, the first phase of the expedition was in full swing. The research vessel Polarstern was moored to a large ice floe and drifted with the sea ice. Numerous research facilities and monitoring stations were installed for the duration of the expedition and the plan was to exchange the researchers and crew every three to four months with the aid of resupply ships and icebreakers. 
On the 28th of February, eventually a support vessel reached Polarstern with her current location being pretty close to the North Pole. Far away from the next hospital, far away from the next intensive care unit and thus not really ideal for the eventual outbreak of the virus. In fact, at this stage of the pandemic, a confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection on board would have meant the immediate termination of the expedition and that would have destroyed many years of preparation and put many lives at risk. At the time, there were no vaccines available and the number of infections with serious, even fatal outcomes continued to climb. Since the ship would be cut off from the outside world in the winter, options for preventing or containing an outbreak on board and for providing patients with the best possible treatment were evaluated in advance. Provisions were readied and amongst other measures, laboratory equipment for PCR tests acquired and the reserves of oxygen, of selected medications, disinfectants, and personal protective equipment increased. However, the utmost priority was ensuring that passengers would arrive aboard infection free. So in February 2020, the Alfred Wegener Institute prepared and issued a catalog of measures for completing a personal changeover whilst mitigating the risk of a SARS-CoV-2 infection. The catalog comprised self-isolation, PCR testing, a quarantine and dedicated means of transportation as well as outbreak management plans. So you can see that the circumstances forced us to come up with a plan pretty early in the pandemic. This was not only a challenge, but also an opportunity to learn and have the first experiences with the necessities that would remain for the years to come. On the 9th of March, Comnap XCOM met to discuss the emergent situation and on the very same day, the COVID-19 ad hoc subcommittee was established and given the task to develop recommendations in the context of Antarctic operations. Non-mandatory COVID-19 recommendations that I guess you all know were developed, discussed multiple times, circulated and finally distributed only 14 days later on the 18th of March. The heart of the document was always the four objectives that were identified, followed by all the recommendations on how to possibly achieve these goals. It was a living document and as such updated and published multiple times to be precise in six different versions and all of them were wherever possible evidence-based and along the lines of the information mainly issued by the World Health Organization, also the national health agencies and all the scientific publications. And if I may say so, they did hold up quite well to the test of time and proved to be rather thorough. Let me show you a graphic here that is part of an article published in Nature Human Behavior and it shows a ranking from the most effective non-pharmaceutical interventions to mitigate the spread of the virus. But fear not, I'm not going to read through all of the points and neither do I expect you to do so. I'd rather make a point myself. More or less all of the many many measures listed here have been implemented in the recommendations from the very beginning. In addition to that, a plethora of meetings and discussions that dealt with the pandemic took place. If I counted correctly, there have been at least 32 meetings alone in the first 11 months. I think that this is both an astonishing but also a quite necessary number. 
the OECD published a paper on the first lessons learned from government evaluations of COVID responses in January 22. And the key messages are certainly worth pondering also by us, especially the last one. Trust requires transparency, crisis communication, engagement of the stakeholders. And I think that the 30 plus meetings that took place in different compositions did contribute hugely to achieve all of this. Eventually, the original recommendation paper evolved into the COMNAP COVID-19 outbreak mitigation and management guidelines for the Antarctic summer seasons. What a name. And the development of the pandemic allowed for the COMNAP roadmap from elimination to mitigation, which was thoroughly discussed and could finally be implemented. So in March 23, the World Health Organization's Director General told reporters that he expects the organization to declare an end to the COVID pandemic later this year. And life's reality seems to be getting quite back to normal as well, at least in the countries that I did visit in the last time. The virus is still present, but to change, as did the perception of the potential threat it poses. The virus did not disappear, and it most likely never will, but apparently it became less dangerous and our response to it does not need to be as strict as it used to be. So where does that leave us now? What are the lessons learned? How are we prepared for the next pandemic to come? And did we do good? I'm not quite sure if I'm the right person to answer these questions. And I'm not even sure if there is a real answer to all of them. So let me start with the easy part. Lessons learned. I will spare you the obvious ones, all the practical things, how to organize a quarantine, how to PCR test in the field, how to vaccinate in Antarctica and so on. All of that was very helpful and it was a great thing to, to have in our repertoire now. But I'd rather talk about communication, which is key. Communication always has been and always will be key, actually, and it is a pretty common knowledge, especially in our business, I guess. But it proved to be so true once more. As is the importance of transparency. So communication really happened a lot in all the meetings, all the documents shared, and transparency was given to a great degree. As always, there might be room for improvement even at the very top, and these fields need to be worked on continuously. If we base our decisions on facts, on, on evidence, should go without saying, but I do believe that this is especially true for decisions that demand a lot from the individuals and the organizations and that potentially put people at risk. And we need to keep up relying on the facts in a world where people sometimes seem to behave in a somewhat post-factual manner. Are we prepared? I think if we keep up the great community and continue to work on all of these things, then we might not be totally prepared, but we'll certainly be much better prepared for the next pandemic. There were around 11 events of corona outbreaks in Antarctica between December 20 and February 23 that I could find reports on. And I think that this number could have been way higher given the incidence of the disease and the challenges of operating Antarctica. And I want to be clear about my understanding of the fact that 
whatever precautions have been in place. And consequently, you might have followed the protocols. There's always also the need for some luck involved. And my sympathy is with those who might have lacked that luck, who might have had a hard time, might have suffered or experienced even worse. So did we do good? I do explicitly exclude myself from the answer, as this is for others to judge. But with that being said, I say yes. I think that the community and the organizations did good, really good. They proved to be reliable resources, compassionate and willed to provide safety for the operations at the expeditioners at great costs and on a really remarkable level, ready to go a long way to achieve this. And it was a great experience to be part of that. And I think that many, many, many people did really, really, really good. Out of the many, I want to especially mention Michelle Rogan Finmore, who has put an incredible amount of work into so many Corona-related things. So thanks to all of you and as promised, I will keep my fingers crossed to prevent you from suffering through another Corona talk from me. Greetings from Bremerhaven. Ciao.